All right, so there's one main thing that I think is letting a lot of producers down when it comes to cooking up good beats. I've listened to so many different beats that producers send me for beat battles and beat reviews, and it's honestly the difference between beginner and pro productions. And that one thing is not being subscribed to my channel and liking my video. So if you want to step up your game, then do that now. But nah, in all seriousness, I want to break down this important step for you all. But before we get into it, today's a special, special day, man, because I've officially launched the Deep Suite, which is my brand new drill bundle. If you haven't heard me talking about it yet, it's 10 brand new kits combined into one huge bundle. It includes a drum kit, a drum fill kit, a loop kit, an effects kit, a MIDI kit, a portal bank, an analog lab bank, a Koto phrase bank, a mixing preset kit, and a one shot kit. There's almost a thousand unique sounds in this bundle, and the best part is it's 100% royalty free. It's easily my hardest kit yet, so I'm gonna show you everything in this video, and then I'll get to the one important step I mentioned. And if you like what you hear, make sure you click the link in the description. Now let's get straight into the video. All right, man, so here it is in all its glory, the Deep Suite. Just look how pretty it's looking, man, with the blue. For the banks like Analog Lab and Portal, I have got video instructions on how to install them for Mac and PC. The Hydro Drum Kit, this is the main part of the kit, man. This has got all of my latest drum sounds in there. There's almost 300 samples in here. A ton of 808s, but there's loads of different sounds in here making crazy beats and then i even threw in some of the essentials just like the ctm the spins and the zay just so you have them and they're easy to access of course you've got your standards like claps loads of counter snares loads of different effects so cold man and then i know a lot of people are cooking up jersey beats as well so i made a whole bunch of jersey bounce fills and then i threw in some of the essentials as well like the bed squeak got my new go-to kick the knocker one which i'll probably use in this video some melody starters and of course, all the usuals like open hats, ton of different percussions, percussion loops too. You know, I love to use my rises, so I've got loads of different ones in here. Some gritty sub bass sounds. For the Koto phrase bank, I actually hired a Koto player in Japan to play these. Separated them by the actual key. So for example, D, D minor, G minor. All played live too. I might even start with one of these for the video. I kept all of them dry because I know some people like to change the reverb and sounds, but what I did do is add a mixing preset. So if you drag in a phrase and drag in the mixing preset, you have the exact mixing chain that I'd use to mix this coat on. Of course, we've got a loop kit with full loops and then a separate folder for the stems. Now this is something new I've never done before. There's a whole mixing kit and these are all of my personal presets that I've made. So all of my 808 sound design presets and my mixing presets, loads of different creative ones for melodies. And then I even threw in my rap vocal presets. So if you have an artist, just drag one of these vocals on and you'll be good to go. Next we've got a one shot kit with some crazy accents. These sound sick under your beats. Next we got the MIDI kit, and this is the biggest MIDI kit I've ever dropped, man. There's so many MIDIs in here. All these for 808s, even ones for your drill effects, hi-hats and counter snares, almost 50 of those. Some for kicks, loads of melody starters, even percussion bounces, literally every aspect of a beat. Next, one of my favorite things, drum fills, man. Some jersey ones. And then lastly, we have the effects kit. So you know we like effects in drill, so we've got loads of impacts, miscellaneous sounds, tonal ones. And in transitions too. What I've even done this time for each of the kits is I've included a collectible card. So the characters that we designed for these kits each have a name, like Aquilion. This is in the drum kit. If you look, that's the cover of the kit, and that was the character. So now each of these kits has a collectible card. And if you look here, these are all the different characters for the bundle. So yeah, crazy, crazy bundle. I think I step up the sound design each time with these kits. So man, I'm just so gassed to drop this one finally. So if you want to check it out, the link will be in the description. It's honestly the best way to support the channel. It's the main product on my site and I don't drop them often. I dropped the Divine Bundle in April and now the Deep Sweet in September. So yeah, if you appreciate all my videos, then at least consider it. But yeah, making this kit made me think of the topic of this video, which is the one thing that can make your beat sound terrible. And that thing is bad sound selection. Man, sound selection is like the most important thing when it comes to making beats. Other than the chords and melodies, the sound controls the overall vibe of the beat. Choosing the right sound to start with can just save you a ton of time when it comes to the overall mix. I see people adding a crazy amount of plugins to each sound trying to get it to sound perfect but if they would have just swapped that out with the right sound to start with they wouldn't have had to do any of it i know a lot of people talk about sound selection but just saying pick the right sounds doesn't really help anyone so i want to show you what i mean let's just start off with the example i just said so i'm going to go to the phrases i really like this one in the d minor bank 
So I'm going to drag that in and just fit that to the tempo. It's one for one. We'll send that to an empty insert and then I'll take my Koto mixing preset. See how cleaner it sounds now. I've just recorded that into Edison. I've gone to tools and then convert to score and dump to piano roll. I've just quantized it a bit and this is what it would sound like as a piano. Still a cool melody, but nothing's telling me Japanese from that sound. So that's the first step of sound selection. Think about the vibe you're trying to create and then research the instruments that are used to create that vibe. All right, so once you've got that first step locked down, the next step is filling up the frequency spectrum. And that's gonna help you decide what type of sound to layer it with, how high or low your instrument should be when it comes to the octaves and how it's gonna sit in the mix. For example, if I pull up an EQ, we can see the koto is taking up most of the mids some low mids, some high frequencies, but it's mostly sitting around five to 2K. So now in my head, I'm thinking maybe we could add some strings cause they tend to be quite high. I'm gonna be adding an 808 in there so that can cover the bass. And then I'm thinking if I layer this with something like a pad, I should maybe bring that up an octave so it's not clashing too much. So let's do that now. We'll open Analog Lab. We'll go to my Aquarius drill bank. And now we could either pick some kind of choir, vocal, some strings or a pad. So let's see. Like this could sound good. I like this atrium preset as well. Yeah, something like that, you know. So let's open it in the piano roll and I'm gonna play it from about here. We'll just copy that note up and then maybe pitch this one up. Okay, so looking at the frequency spectrum now, Still got some room in the high end. So now I'm thinking, okay, we could add some kind of counter melody like a flute, because usually flutes are played quite high. So we'll clone my analog lab bank, because I've got some nice flutes in here. So for example, we could use this Pokemon Red preset. And then for this, I'm just going to record something in. So I've just changed the melody a bit. Just these notes. And see how it's still not clashing. Mm. It's just giving us some nice bass. So even those three layers could easily be enough for a melody, but I'm gonna try adding a few other things. Let's try some texture, just pitch it up so it's in key. And then I think we could add some portal on this just to make it more interesting. And look at the portal bank, man. It's looking so sick in there. Let's try a few different ones. Or maybe some crystals. Yeah, like that. Just drown it in reverb too. We'll also take out the lows and some highs. Yeah, like there. You can still hear it, but it's really sort of. Okay, I'm going to try something now. I'm just going to render each of these. I think I want to change the key and just see what it sounds like flipped. Could try and pitch it up three. And then sometimes I like to double the speed. Five times sounds kind of sick, you know. Yeah, I might run with that, you know. I think that's sounding hard. So let's get a drum pattern in. And this brings me on to the next step of sound selection, which is choosing the right drum samples. So this beat's sounding pretty dark. I think I want to make a drill beat out of it, maybe a trap section too. So I already know what type of sounds I need to pick. Obviously, the deep suite that I designed was mainly for drill beats. Of course, I'm going to say it's a perfect one, but let me show you what would happen if you didn't pick the right sounds. We'll start off by picking some that I like and then I'll swap them out. So when I'm choosing sounds, I'll just play the loop and then click through some until I find one that matches it. So I like that. This one too. Really like this scratch sound. Almost sounds like a knife, so it's kind of matching that Japanese vibe. We'll take this one as well. And then this tick one. Then we'll go to my MIDI kit. And I just want a simple one. I can see from there. Lately, I've been choosing like three different ones so they can bounce off each other, but it's not needed. So even this to start with. And then we could add some filler notes. And then maybe a roll at the end. So listening to those sounds, you instantly know it's drill. And it sounds quite unique as well. But one thing I see a lot of people doing is just grabbing any hi-hat. And you just don't get that authentic sound. For example, let me go to my trap kit. I'll just grab my go-to trap hi-hat and copy that pattern. Like, it sounds okay. And it can work for some drill beats. But going from that to this... To me, it just makes all the difference. Same with the snare. Let me just bring in this one. Sounds like a trap snare. Just turn it up. 
see what I'm saying? The sound just wasn't made for drill. And like the snare by itself might have fitted in a different beat, but in this beat, it just sounds terrible. And then some people will try to do a ton of processing to get it sounding crispy, get it to beef up. They'll add loads of compressors and different things that they don't need. Because what you don't understand is if you're using sounds that are already pre-mixed, you don't really have to do that. Let me show you this one, for example. It sounds like a live snare. So if I was going to use that, it's going to need a lot of processing to get it sounding beefy. It just sounds weak. And it's just not really fitting the vibe of the beat. So if I was going to make a boom bat beat, that might work, but it would still need a lot of processing. Then I'll open up my hydro drum kit, choose something like the Tyson snare. Already sounds better. Could even pitch it down. And here's a quick gem for you. So if you open up anything in Edison, click there and then detect pitch regions, you can see the key. So some drums and perks like snares might actually have a certain note that they're hitting on. So that one's hitting on C sharp. So I'll right click to select C sharp and that will be tuned to match the piano roll. All right, next up is the 808. And this is where a lot of people go wrong too. I'm gonna start off by picking a sound that I like, which is the Stax one. And then I'll replace it with something that I don't like. So you can see what I mean. simple for the first half actually that could go to the end you know Hard. So the 808's cutting through, the kick smacking, and I haven't had to do any compression, no EQing, no nothing. All I have is a soft clipper on the master. I just bring the slope down. Some people like to have the slope up or slope to the bottom. Just depends on the style you're going for, but that's all I have on my master. Let me show you how it would sound with a weak 808 or just a wrong sound selection. Okay, I found a good example. So this is what I'd call a weak 808. I can hear the sub in it, but that's just not gonna cut through. Let me play the exact same pattern. See what I'm saying? Sounds dead. Play the slides at the end. So I'm hearing this sub, but it's just not cutting through. And what people will do is start adding EQs, distortion, sausage fattener. And it might just cut through, but it's so unnecessary because you could just pick a better sound to start with. All right, let's just finish the beat. So I'm going to add a stomp ender. Let's try this one as well. Yeah, I think I prefer this one for this beat. All right, let's go to the drum fills as well, because I know these are some people's favorites. Okay, I'm going to split the drums, because I'm going to add a second 808. So let's copy these out. This section, we'll just make that unique. And this one, I just want to add one of the bonus essentials, like the ring Z. I want the delay on the counter snare to come off at this point, just so there's some variation. The intro. Could just have the koto. We'll leave the flute out of this part. Maybe leave the delay off as well. We'll add a riser too. Just cut the end. All right, so in the verse, we could take everything out apart from the koto and then bring the pad in. And then for the bridge, we'll just bring this back. All right, and then we just need to add some counter snares back into the bridge and then just bring it all back. All right, last thing I did to give it some more energy in the hook was I took the Koto, I copied it, made this one unique, and then I pitched this up a full octave. But I just filtered it with an EQ, took out some mids, widened it with an imager, and then added a ton of reverb. And then I took the flute and just added that to the beginning of the verse instead. Oh yeah, let's have a listen from the beginning. So just starting with a Koto, it's the 8-bar intro and straight into the hook. Oh, wait, 
so sick too. video and if you want to check out the deep suite the link is in the description for more drill tutorials just click up here or to switch up the vibe and genre click up here